what influences the kind of story that you tell? Your, when you choose that you want to make a film, what influences your choice of the type of film that you can make? Um, I like films where I can make an impact and it's quite like sort of controversial. It's sort of a topic that people don't really want to talk about. And um, it's going to sort of resonate. So the films that I like to make, that the films that I like to make, I like to make sure that they have, that they will move people, like people will watch them, they'll be engaged. And my things are, I want people to laugh, I want them to cry, and I want them to go away with like, resonated, something's resonated with them in that film, some sort of emotion. So you better be crying when you watch one of my films. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you are also laughing. I like to make, I like to shock. I like to be bold with my content. Like, I like people to say, oh my God, like, why does she do this? Like, cause debate, cause conversation. Like, I don't want to just make films for the sake of it, just to say, oh, I'm making a film. It always has to be an impact. So I, I specialize in social impact. In your journey of uh, a, a filmmaker, if you want, a female filmmaker in Britain, is there somebody you looked up to and you say, okay, I want to be like that person and you were learning to, maybe learning from that individual to see maybe how you can uh, become like that person, like kind of a role model? Is there anyone that you want to share with us? Ah! Um, it sounds really bad, but there's not really anyone that I've sort of... Um, can look up to because there's not many filmmakers in the UK. <laughs> so um, there is a guy actually, his name um, is Freddie. So he's an independent filmmaker, but I really look up to him because he's just out there doing his thing. Like he's just making films back to back. Like he hasn't got the broadcasters behind him as yet, but he's out there making films, doing massive releases, and he's just going for it. And I admire people like that, that just literally put their foot on the brake and they're just like, they're, they don't care about no's. They don't care about who's seeing them. They are just out there making it. So yeah, I'd say Freddie, he's someone that I would definitely look up to in the UK as a filmmaker, indie filmmaker. But other than that, I just want to be, I want to set the bar. Like, this is why I'm here, like Aisha Scott. I want to be the one that sets the new, that, the, the new the new Tyler Perry of the UK. That's who I want to be, like, just take it to another level, like, start dropping film content every minute. <laughs> Do you get what I mean? Like, have my own studio and get other filmmakers just be making content and pushing that out on a daily basis. So... Yeah, I kind of like just, yeah, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. But that is very interesting, though. You need to have the audacity of, of the audacity and also the boldness to challenge yourself and to say, yes, I want to do this. I don't care. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like that. <laughs> you have to, because you only got yourself. That's true. But are there challenges that uh, someone like you face trying to make film in the United in the United Kingdom? Are there some challenges that you face? Yeah, definitely. There's loads of challenges because, like, being an independent filmmaker, you don't have the financial resources. So, all my film content, I've had to finance myself with my own money, and to get the reach, like, to market your films to get them distributed globally and just to make them bigger and get them even the production quality to a higher standard you need finances and finances are so limited in um film production especially as a black filmmaker so they have an incentives for filmmakers over here where you can apply to them but the application forms are quite tedious they're quite depressing actually like trying to apply to get funding for your films and as I was like mentioning before like over here unless you're you've got a big name or you've got certain credits and that they don't really 
tend to take you seriously until you start sort of crossing over that bridge into mainstream then they start looking at you oh who's that person let's get them under the radar kind of thing but just being an independent filmmaker there's a lot of hurdles in terms of trying to like get your stuff commissioned because even though I've made like films for the past eight years and I've been dropping out content I'm still as a sort of unknown writer I'm still like classed as an emerging writer and if I was to apply for an incentive, they would still see me as someone with no experience. I get it. Do you get what I mean? I get it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, just, it's a lot. <laughs> All right. What about the distribution? What do you want to say about that? Uh, when you finish to make the film, how do you get it distributed? So I literally do everything by myself. So at the minute, I've just... Because I do other stuff as well. So I'm, like, quite active on social media. I like to see myself as an influencer. I've got, like, a YouTube channel. So I just sort of promote my films around the audiences that I've built throughout the years of, like, doing acting, doing spoken words and things like that. So it's just really, at the minute, me getting my films out there is just... Like doing stuff like this, having an interview with you, like talking about my um, filmmaking career. So I do get interviewed quite a lot and I never turn down interviews because I always feel like that sort of um, building sort of a stepping stone to who you are and your journey. So when you do get to that sort of global crossover, people can come back and look at your stuff and they'll be like, oh, my God, she was doing this from way back and they get to learn about your journey. So I'm just pushing my own stuff at the moment. <laughs> like, literally, like, online, Insta, TikTok, LinkedIn, YouTube, like, anywhere I can pull it out there. Networking in person, like, anytime I meet someone, I'm like, yeah, I'm a filmmaker, what's my film? So that is literally my distribution. Oh, yeah, I should say that I was lucky with my last film because... The last film that I did, Dismiss, that did really well. It did get picked up by a distribution company called Focus First International in the States. So that got picked up. It did end up going on like seven um, streaming platforms, including Apple and um, what's the next one? Amazon. So it, it got quite big, actually. But that was doing like I had to do a social media marketing campaign. I did get some press and things like that. And, yeah, you just got to, like, really grind and get your stuff out there. So well, that, that story, that uh, film you were talking about, that got some distribution, uh, tell us something about it. Get some people curious. So Dismissed is a anti-bullying short film, and I made the film to bring awareness to um, young individuals that are getting bullied. And to also sort of take away the stereotype of the type of person that can be bullied. So in my film, it's a young girl. She's an A-star pupil. She does modelling. And that's not usually your sort of character that is sort of um, put out there as someone who gets bullied. It's usually sort of a downtrodden student or someone that's not very popular but it's not always the case. Like sometimes it can be the popular girl. It can be the one that is sort of striving the most in class. And I also wanted to sort of highlight in the film, like how um, the pressures of teachers can sort of have an impact on students who are getting bullied.